Yes, guys, welcome back to the Irish Hotspur with your boy, Big Dave. And, of course, we came crashing back down to earth on Monday night versus Chelsea. Of course, them inflicting our first league defeat of the season on us. And we have very few options to pick from with them injuries and suspensions really mounting up. However, I will not have a defeatist opportunity around here. And in times of adversity comes great opportunity for them fringe players to step up. So hopefully they can come to the party. And what I will add to that is the reason why I think they might is because Ange Postacogli will have will 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 handle the adversity different to maybe what a Jose did or a Conte did. I felt like when Conte or Jose were relying on other players to step in, they knew they didn't really want to, you know, they weren't a part of the manager's plans, this, that, and the other. And they knew they'd be straight out the lineup as soon as others come back. Whereas I think with Pasta Coglu, he might have a different way of man managing these players and that they've been hungry, that they're going to be hungry and waiting for this opportunity. And he might just be able to get into their mindset and get them to play Pasta Coglu. But interesting talk. But look, let's get into it. I'm going to give you my lineup that I think we should use today at the, uh, at the Molyneux to take home all. Three points, and of course, we will start with the man of the hour, and that is Big Vic, aka Venom. The Cario, absolutely phenomenal against Chelsea Monday night, and he has been all season, all season long. For me, outside of Allison, probably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. He played a sweeper keeper uh, role against Chelsea on Monday night, and without Van de Ven, maybe it's a role we might just see him play more and more to maybe because with Van de Ven, right, we had that recovery pace in behind where Van de Ven could get on the end of it. We don't really have that with some of the players we're going to be selecting, so maybe a way around that is having Vicario on the edge of his box as that in that sweeper keeper sort of role, and it might just help us in that regard. And also, he's he. he you know, Vicario stepped up in big moments and he's going to be tried and tested more than ever. He's going to face a lot more shots more than ever before when he had Vicario or, or Van de Ven and Romero at centre-back in front of him. So my hope is that he can show more of that goalkeeping ability. And if he steps up to the plate and answers the call with being tested a lot more, we might just get away with this back line. Now moving on to the left-back and we will go with Emerson Royale. The last three games against uh, Fulham, Palace and Chelsea, he has come off the bench to play at left back and he hasn't put a foot wrong. He's really filled in and done a job for us there. Um, and he's becoming the ultimate utility man to play right back, centre back and left back. What I will say is that if Davies is fit, you might see Emerson moved into centre back. But I'd rather... Play Emerson Royale at left back, I think he'll offer us a lot more defensively and going forward that maybe Davies can't offer us because the last few appearances Davies has made or the last couple of starts, Van de Ven has been there to cover him defensively and he ain't there today. So, on that reason, I will go with my man. Emerson Royale has been absolutely brilliant stepping in as a utility man. On to right back and the only guy that remains in this back line from Monday night. It's unbelievable to say that and that is my man, Pedro Porro. He's going to have to step up today. He doesn't. He can't rely on the the leadership of of Romero and Van, and the expertise of Van der Ven to maybe help him out defensively, um, and also you know just to pull him into it so that he doesn't get caught out keeping the line and stuff like that. So he's going to have to step up and be that leader across the back line today because he's the only one that remains, um, and he's going to have to stay switched on and more concentrated than ever before, and are just. Really want to see an excellent defensive display um, from Pedro Porro today because he is the only one that remains and we're going to need him to step up and maybe be that leader across the back line. Now at right centre-back, I have gone with a guy who I think is ready and that is Ashley Phillips. And the reason why I say I think he's ready is because I've watched a lot of the under-21s this season and he just looks head and shoulders above everyone else. Physically, to me, he's ready for the Premier League. He's got a bit of uh, pace about him, which will add maybe a bit of recovery pace to that back line. Not as quick as Van der Ven, but at least he's got a bit of pace about him. Um, hasn't really put a foot wrong defensively for the under-21s this season either. And he's decent on the ball. Um, and for me, you know, we, we paid that money. To bring him in here, we chose not to go and get a backup centre back. We chose to spend that money on Ashley Phillips, and we brought him in here. And the reason why is because he's made eleven senior appearances for Blackburn Rovers, so it's not like he's a complete novice. He's tried, tested, 
and trusted. And that's maybe why we pulled, spent the money on him to bring him in here and pull the trigger. So for me, give the guy the opportunity. Put your money where your mouth is and play the kid. I think he's good enough. Now, this next selection is going to absolutely kill me. But it is the one and only Eric Van Dyer. Hopefully it's not uh, Eric Dyer here tonight, and hopefully we can be sitting here saying Eric Van Dyer. But look, I'm not happy about this because he shouldn't be here. We should have shipped him on and bought somebody else in, and he refused to leave and didn't really allow us that sort of option. So I am annoyed with him in that aspect. However, he came off the bench against Chelsea and didn't really put too much of a foot wrong. I thought it'd be catastrophic, but it wasn't. My only problem with Dyer is I've seen these sort of performances before where he'll do one, not amazing, but he doesn't do anything wrong. But can he back it up? He's going to be given the opportunity there. There's a lot of critics around Eric Dyer, me being the biggest one, and it's an opportunity for him to shut people like me up. So go out there and prove your work. You did say you want your ashes to be buried underneath the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You didn't want to go anywhere over the summer. You're getting your opportunity. Now step up and show Spurs fans that you can be a part of a team that want to go on and challenge for a title. Now's your opportunity. Now I've got that off my chest. I feel a little bit better. I reckon we will go with two defensive midfielders in front of that four. So I've gone with a, a 4 2 3 1 today, maybe just to give us that bit of extra cover in front of that back line. And I will start with Eves Basuma. Of course, surprisingly, didn't pick up a yellow card against Chelsea, but he is still. One yellow card away from suspension. So he has he's walking a tightrope and he's going to have to be on his absolute best behavior for me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, he's just going to have to be on his best behavior. We can't afford him to be suspended over this next period of games. You've got, um, you've got Aston Villa after Wolves. You've got Man City, Newcastle and West Ham. So he's just going to have to be on his best behavior, not pick up cards. Hopefully there's other players around him that maybe can help out in that department if needs be, pull players down so that Basuma doesn't have to. But on the ball, we're going to need him. We're going to need him to drive out this Wolves team. No, Madison, we're going to have to see a lot more creativity from Eves Basuma. Now moving on to his partner in crime, and I have gone with Papa Mata Sar, a.k.a. Daddy Longlegs, absolutely sensational for a 20-year-old. I did say last week, for those of you who uh, like these shows and are tuning in every week, that he needs to add more assists and goals to his game if he, in the long run he wants to keep Ben Tecor out of the team. And he did add that assist, of course, setting up Kuliseski against Chelsea. So he is listening to me. Um, and look, what I love about Papa Massar, and the reason why I think we've got a real gem on our hands, is for a 20-year-old, when you put him out there, he's reliable, he's dependable, and you know exactly what performance you're going to get from him. Hard work and full of heart, energy, desire, passion. You know, he can do both sides of the game. More of that, Papa Matasar. And yeah, you will have a very successful career at Tottenham Hotspur and very, very quickly become a fan's favourite, my man. Now, moving on to the attacking option in this midfield and no Madison of course got that horrible news today that he's going to be out to the new year with an ankle injury so we're going to need someone to step up in that department and I am going to bring back Rodrigo Bentancourt remember he's the reason and he very well could come back and be the reason again this season sorry for the ride but last season before he went, oh, you, a lot of people would argue when he went out injured, it all really fell apart. We didn't have any sort of, you know, what would you say, presence in the midfield when, when Skip came into partner Hoiberg. But what we also missed from Ben Decor was the goals and assists that he was adding from his game from that midfield. We've seen it at the end of the season before that, carried it into last season, then unfortunately got that horrible injury. If he can uh, get back to them levels and bring back them goals and assists, we might not just miss Madison as much as maybe people think if Bentecourt can fill in on this role. I know a lot of people maybe would have said, Dave, why not Lasalle? for me, he's had his opportunities off the bench and in the Fulham game and hasn't took any of them or looked like he wants to be here. And I do think Rodrigo's Bentecourt is good enough going forward, um, you know, to help us out in that department. Um, so I have got... But, like I said, it all depends on his fitness, right? If he can't last 90 minutes, you will see this there. So, but I'd rather see Bentecourt. I'm sick of all these. I don't want to stick. I don't want to keep persisting with players that have been tried and tested and haven't done anything. But let me know um, if, if, if you want the Celso in in the comments below and the reasons why. 
Now we will move on to left wing, and I've really felt sorry for this kid last week, and that is Brennan Johnson, of course, becoming the sacrificial lamb and being hauled off very, very early after Romero sending off. And I felt sorry for him because he was looking lively. He was looking dangerous. And it looked like we had that flu in front tree that uh, Poster Cogley was speaking about having a couple of weeks ago before the Palace game. Um, but look, the only way not to become that sacrificial lamb in future is becoming undroppable through your performances, through goals and assists. And I really do think Brennan Johnson will have that bit between his teeth today. And I think he's going to step up. And I'm, I'm expecting a really big performance from the kid today. I think he'll be the guy to watch out for for us today. Um, I think he'll be hurt after being hauled off early and being that sacrificial lamb. No one likes to be it. Now, moving on to the right side with my boy Dejan Kunu Sexy. That ginger from Sweden stepped up last week, got the goal against Chelsea. Deflected effort, maybe, but... You know, hopefully now he's got the confidence to pull the trigger because one of the biggest things that have maybe annoyed myself and Jack with Kulu has been that he's been hesitant to pull that trigger. And I just hope now that he, that goal will give him the confidence and then he maybe look at it and go, well, you never know, you know, deflections can happen. Pull that trigger in them in, in uh, when, when them circumstances or in their, when them opportunities arise rather than trying to square it all the time. So hopefully now it'll give him a lot more confidence in that department. But of course... We're also going to need that defensive work that he gives us and that the, the way he holds up the ball and helps bring other people into play, lets people overlap him and get up with the play as well. So we need a massive performance from Kulu. I'm just delighted to see the man back in the goals. And then that brings me on to the striker. And my God, does Son have the weight of the world on his shoulders with no Romero, no Madison because they're injured. He's the only one in the leadership group left. And he's really going to have to play his part. He's still going to have to get into them midfield. They're still going to have to get into them back line if they're not pulling their way. He has to be. He has to make up for Romero or a Madison dishing out maybe, um, you, you know, dishing out advice and stuff like that. He's really going to have to become really vocal now in their absence. And interestingly enough, he hasn't scored in his last nine Premier League matches against Wolves. And I just hope you know, that Son is ready to smash that omen because we really do need him in this period. You know, in seasons gone by when we've had to outscore teams because of our poor back line, which some would argue, maybe me, that we are uh, maybe approaching this time now with that makeshift back line. Harry Kane stepped up with a lot of equalizers and winners. And what I mean by that is he stepped up with a lot of goals that put points on the board, which is the most crucial thing. Now, in fairness to Sonny, you know, he stepped up in the in the absence of who's going to score the goals in the London derbies without Kane. Son has done it. Who's going to score goals on a consistent basis without Kane? Son has done it. Well, this is the last question. Can he step up and bag us, bag us goals when, in games where we have to outscore our positions because we can't rely on clean sheets and amass points on the board? I reckon he'll stand up and answer that also. But guys, I'm absolutely pumped. I ain't going into this game with a defeatist attitude. I think Big Ange has the plan. Let me know in the comments below what you who you want to see at centre backs. I know Phillips is a controversial call. Let me know whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me, and why. And also who starts instead of Madison. But nonetheless, it's a big game. We're still second in the table. One defeat does not define us. We have a lot of questions about, you know. What if we get injuries to key players and suspensions? Well, we have that now. So we're going to get some answers pretty, pretty soon. And I would say to people, rather than be nervous or afraid of it, go in and enjoy it. As always, come on, you Spurs, in the big hands we trust. We never stop. See you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for the pre-match build-up. Let's go.